we can say adult, two children, two different ages. There are many different kinds of evidence that we use in archaeology. So this bone may well go with one of the other um, individuals. My real specialty is analyzing human bones. You can see here, this is the femur that we looked at before, and there is a chart showing what the bones look like, and even though it's really eroded, you can tell which femur it is. That's their right side. If the bone's found in a burial, or in this case here, if the bone is found in a, a looter's trench, this is the drawing. What you're trying to do is get as much information as you can out of a few pieces. And we cleaned up the looter's excavation. And what we're looking at is trying to reconstruct the whole way of life here at Carcoll. The bone is an excellent way to do that. The looters had taken everything off the top of the bench, but they didn't get what was on the underside. We cleaned that out, and we found that there actually was still bone in place on the floor of the tomb. Just from this one screen of bone, we know that we actually have three different people. There are two children, and there's one adult that's represented inside this, this tiny little bit of bone. All right, now let's look at our evidence, okay? This is a dental development chart. We can do analyses beyond just how many people are there, how old are they, what sex are they, are they male, are they female? If you were to look at what the tooth development was in a two-year-old's mouth or a four-year-old or a six-year-old's mouth. We'll have a pretty good idea either how old this person was or if there was more than one person. We can look to see if people were healthy. We can look to see if they've got dental problems. That is a lower inside the mandible. M-A-N-D-I-B-L-E. A um, premolar, first premolar, and there is um, an incisor. Right? So when we look at that chart over here. How old is this person? Eight. It could be eight years old. Not bad. Pretty good. But besides the physical things that we can see when we look at the bone, we can take this bone and have it analyzed by someone who's a specialist in using a mass spectrometer. They can help tell us what the ancient diet was like, whether the person was eating mostly maize, whether they were having a high protein diet, whether they uh, were eating a lot of fish or a lot of meat. And that will help us reconstruct not just what people ate, but it helps us tell a little bit about the social structure here at Carcoal. So that means it's been in the person's mouth and they've been using it for a while. In fact, see right up there? Because it turns out that the people in the palaces ate different things. The elite ate better than everyone else. It's a little bit shovel-shaped, what we call shovel-shaped, but that's pretty typical of, of Maya teeth. If you're finding the human bone in a context with a burial, with pottery, or maybe with some stone tools, then you can look at what are the death and burial customs, what are the mortuary customs of a particular group of people. We are starting to get a much better handle on Maya burial practices, but we don't really understand everything about it at all at this point. People are sometimes buried with the tools of their trade, so you might find spinning implements with a woman that would suggest that she was creating cloth. You might find stone artifacts that would suggest that someone was an artisan. Or you might find pottery that is supposed to carry the person into the afterlife that would have once had offerings of cacao or other kinds of food items inside. We identify the royal interments, or what we would consider to be interments of members of the ruling family, because those are located in buildings right near the palaces, and those are tombs that have painted texts inside them. But there are no death dates in these tombs that match the death dates of our known rulers. So we have not yet found a ruler's tomb. And it would be really nice to find at least one ruler's tomb so we would know how a ruler's buried, what kind of context they're buried in. Are they buried by themselves? Are there other individuals buried with them? Do they always have um, ear flares with them? Are they usually buried with stingray spines or obsidians for bloodletting? It would just be wonderful to be able to have a ruler's tomb to compare to all the other 20 plus years of data we have to complete the sequence here at Carcoll.